Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for August, uh, what is today? August 17th, 2022. So I'm teaching a series entitled God's Grace in Our Faith. This is part 64 of the overall series. As I've been walking through this series, my job or my assignment, my calling is to teach the word of God in a way that people can have a functional understanding of it. That is, it's not, uh, I, my job is to demystify the concepts and the ways of God so that it can become something that is applicable to your daily living. And so as I'm walking this thing out and you're getting a better understanding of God's grace and our requirement to live by faith, I trust that you're putting this into action, that you are making uh, those changes that you need to make in order to die to self, yield to God, be led by the Holy Spirit, that you are learning to discern the voice of the Holy Spirit, so you can walk this thing out by faith, so that you can get out of you everything that God deposited in you while you're in the land of the living. So this is God's grace and our faith, part 64. The title of this message is It's Already Done, part two. And really what I'm going to be dealing with today is understanding God's sovereignty. I'm going to talk about the sovereignty of God and how that applies to you and I. I want you to get ready to receive the word of God. All right, so let's get into the word for this morning. In that little video that you just saw, one of the things that I, I, I flash all these things in front of you, I want to get that through your eye gate down in your heart. One of the things I keep telling you is that greater is coming for you. Put that in the chat. Say greater is coming for me. Let that be your declaration. Let that let that be that, that every day of your life, you're going to walk with God. You're going to experience God's best. That God is a God of progression and not regression. Forward ever, backward never. The best is yet to come. Greater is coming for you. Say that. Say that. Put that in the chat. All right. You got it? All right. So let's get into it. Um, so as uh, we've been looking at different scriptures and um, John 1 and 14, John 1 and 17 are like the foundational scriptures. So I'm, I'm going to share these with you and then I'm going to get into some other scriptures as well. So in John 1 and 14, the Bible says that the word Jesus became flesh. He, he dwelt among us. We were able to behold his glory. It is the glory of the only begotten of the Father who came from the Father full of grace and truth. In John 1 and 17, the Bible says the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we've been learning not how not to walk as rules-based or being very religious or living performance-based. We've been learning how to walk grace-based. And today I'm going to talk about the sovereignty of God. Now, whenever I talk about God's sovereignty, I get questions like, well, Rick, if God is sovereign, which he is, but if God is sovereign, then why does he allow a school shooting? Or if God is sovereign, then why does he allow cancer? Or if God is, you know, you know that thing. So you, you get all these questions. Uh, and uh, so what I'm going to do today is help you get an understanding that God is committed to the system that he created. You will never maximize what you do not understand. And so for us to get a functional understanding of, of faith, we got to understand God's God's plans, his purposes, his character, his attributes, his nature, and his ways. we got to understand his system and the things that he set up. So one of the things we got to understand is that God set up the system to where humans are in charge of this planet. And so put that in the chat. Humans are in charge of this planet. I'm going to explain how humans are in charge of this planet. And as a believer, we got to get a functional understanding of this so we can stop blaming God for things that he's actually enabled us to do. So you and I, we're called to represent God in this world, to represent God. As humans, we were sent to this planet, to the earth, to show the earth what heaven is like. We were supposed to extend heaven to the earth on a daily basis. So if God didn't give us as humans the, the right to choose to be free moral agents, say that, say, I am a free moral agent. So if God didn't give you the right to choose to be a free moral agent, then let me explain what would happen. 
if you were not a free moral agent, meaning that you have the right to, to make whatever decisions, um, if you didn't have that right, then there would really be no need for man. Because let me explain. If you're not a free moral agent and God is basically orchestrating everything that you do, then God doesn't need us because God is the one that's pulling the strings. Like if we were puppets and God were a puppet master, then we really wouldn't need humans because it would be God doing anything any, any, everywhere. Uh, anyway, so they, let me explain it this way. If God was in charge of everything and we didn't have the right to make our own decisions, then we couldn't worship because worship would not be genuine. It would be fake because it would be forced. That's not real worship. If God is making me worship God, then it's not worship, right? Or submission. Let's talk, I talk about submission and surrender. Well, surrender would be fictitious. It wouldn't really be surrender because it would be contrived. It would be God forcing me to surrender. So that's not surrender. If God forces me to surrender, then, then it's not surrender. It, I couldn't offer God any sacrifices because the sacrifice would be farce. Because it would be something that, that God has orchestrated. If God orchestrated me to provide him a sacrifice and is forcing me to give him a sacrifice, then it's not a sacrifice, <laughs> right? I mean, so, so for all of these things to mean anything, they must come from your heart. It must be an act. Look at me. It must be an act of your free will. Put that in the chat. Say, God gave me free will. And so for, for my worship to mean something, for my sacrifice to mean something, for my giving to mean something, for my yielding to God to mean something, it means that I'm doing it. It, it means, yeah, the fact that I'm doing it is, is why it means something. Now, it's the grace of God that's on me. This series is about God's grace and our faith. But since I'm the one that's choosing to submit to God, I'm the one that's choosing to surrender. I'm the one that's choosing to worship God. Come on now. I'm the one that's choosing to give God my praise then it means something to God because it means something to me because I'm the one that's choosing it. If God forced me to do it, it wouldn't mean anything because it would be God orchestrating everything. So you got to understand that God gave us both as, as humans. He gave us both the right or the responsibility, the charge over this planet, right? And then he also gave us the right to choose not to, to walk in it. God gave you authority uh, over your life and over the things in your life, but you also have the choice not to accept that authority. God gave you the responsibility to pray over your family. You have the you have the choice not to pray over your family. God gave you the right and the responsibility to, to establish a hedge of protection over your children. But you know what you can do? You could choose not to do it. God is not going to force you to do it. So so let me let, let's look at some scriptures about. Remember, this series is about God's grace and our faith. And so um, to understand God's sovereignty, there's some things that we got to understand foundational scriptures on this. So Psalms 115 and verse 16, I'm going to read these slowly because I need you to get it. The Bible says the highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth God has given to mankind. Let me say that again. The heavens belong to the Lord, but you know what God did with the earth? He gave it to mankind. Okay. Um, Psalms 8 verses 3 through 6. David said, I look at the heavens that you made. God, with your own hands, I see the moon and the stars that you created. And I wonder, why are humans so important to you? Why do you even think about us? Why do you care so much about humans? Why do you even notice them? You made man almost like gods. Think about that. He said, you made us Almost like you. You made us like in your image and after your life. And why do you care about so, us so much? Because we're just like you. You made us just like you. You crown humans with glory and honor. And then David said this. The Bible says, you put them in charge of everything that you made. You put everything under their control. I'm not making this up. This is in the Bible. You put them in charge of everything. You put everything under their control. Genesis 1, verses 26 and 27, the Bible says, then God said, now let us make humans who will be like us. They will rule. Who's going to rule? They, humans. They will rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air. They will rule over the large animals and all the little things that crawl on the earth. So God created humans in his own image. Say this, say, I was created in the image of God, right? So God created humans in his own image. He created them, humans, to be like him. 
He created them, male and female. Ooh, I'm not going to get on this male and female thing, but listen, women in the kingdom, in, in the anointing, in the kingdom of God, women are no less than men. Women are equally anointed. W women have rule and power and authority. He made us male and female. So as it, we women can can cast out demons and speak with new tongues, and uh, we women can can cause the the lame uh, uh, to walk and the blind to see and all of that. And so the anointing that's that's on men is is also available to women. And so women are not second class citizens. Anyway, let me get off of that. Let me keep going. He made them male and female. God bless them. And said to them, okay, this is what God said to them. Have many children, fill the earth, and take control of it. Take control of the earth. He said that to us. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air. Rule over every living thing that moves on the earth. So what does this mean for you today? Now I'm going to get to teaching. You said, well, Rick, man, that, you said a lot. Sovereignty, I'm trying to understand. Okay, I got you. I'm going to share four things with you this morning. This is, this is, is I'm going to try to take my time. And you might need to listen to this again. Get this and get the notes. This is important. You ready? Four things. Number one, here we go. God placed man in charge of the earth. So I just read to you Genesis 1, 26 and 27. I just read it, right? He placed them. He said, they will be like us. He said, they will rule. They will rule. He created us to be like himself. And then he said, you take control of it. Take control of the earth. So God made the earth and everything that's in it outside of man in five days. On the sixth day, God created man and then put man in charge of everything that he created. So from that day forward, from the sixth day forward, who was in charge? Mankind. Mankind was in charge of this planet. So there are humans right now who blame God for everything that happens to them, that happens on the earth, that happens all over the place. And they don't, it's like they're failing to understand that God gave us the power and the authority to rule and to govern and to dominate on this planet. So there's some things that you're blaming God for that you're actually supposed to take accountability and responsibility for. All right, number two, David was fascinated with God's fascination with us. <laughs> David was like, why is it? Like, oh my God, you made us. He says, you made man almost like God's. You crowned them with glory and honor. You put them in charge of everything that you made. That's what the Bible says. You put everything under their control. Why, why, why did you do that, God? See, mankind, both male and female, is in charge of everything God made. Mankind, both male and female, is charged with ruling over everything that God created on this planet. So there are many things that humans are blaming God for today that God had nothing to do with. Real talk. They're, 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 these things come as a result of either A, the poor decisions of humans, right? B, the results of a fallen system or see anything else. Like you don't even know. Like sometimes you may, you know how you can, the blessing is passed on to the second and third generation. You know how your grandkids are going to benefit from something that you did. Like you made a decision and your grandkids will benefit in, in a positive way uh, based on the decisions that you make today. You, you know, you understand that, right? Well, guess what? The negative blessings and cursings pass on to the second and third generation. You were born predisposed to some blessings, but you were also born predisposed to some cursings. And so you see how there are generational curses that pass on from generation to generation, right? And so th then we people are blaming God. That could be a decision that their parents made. That could be a decision that their grandparents made. We don't know what happened. So, I mean, the whole system of the earth functions. You got to get a better understanding of this. So there are many humans that are blaming God for things that God didn't do. And so this planet is also, let me explain, this planet is also in a fallen state already. And so you got to understand that you're living in a fallen state and you as a believer have to be active in your faith, right? Let me keep explaining. Um, number three. Understanding free will and sowing and reaping is critical to walking with God. So in Genesis 8, Genesis 8 and 22, after the flood, the Bible says, listen, while the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest, day and night, cold, uh, you know, summer and winter or, or cold and heat will not cease. So there's this, while the earth remains, the whole earth functions on a system of cause and effect sowing and reaping, and the free will of humans. And a lot of Christians don't understand this. And this is, and pastors, un unfortunately, there's some pastors that confuse people when they say they make a bad situation even worse, when they say, I hate this statement, God is in control. Let me, let me, let me say that again. 
I hate when people say God is in control. If your child just died or there was an accident and you lost your uncle or, or, you know, something freak happened. Oh, somebody just died of cancer. And somebody says, Oh, God is in control. What do you think that's going to do to that person? I mean, do you think God did that? I mean, once again, God is not pulling the strings. God is not pulling the strings on a serial killer. God is not the one that's pushing, you know, a mass shooter to go into a school and shoot up a school. God is not feeding drugs to an addict. God is not causing a disease to come upon somebody. Matter of fact, some people even think, like I remember having a conversation with somebody in my family that said, well, you know, such and such has cancer, but you know, God knows, God does everything. God, God knows what he's doing. And I said, wait a minute, what? What did you say? I said, she said, God knows what he's doing. I said, well, are we going to pray for this person? Oh yeah, of course we're going to pray. Are we going to pray for healing? Yeah, we're going to pray for healing. But why would you say that God knows what he's doing? Well, God does everything. Also, do you think that God put cancer in that person? Well, I don't know. God does everything. Wait a minute. If you think God put something, if, if God put something on you, then you should want it if it comes from God. And so if you think God put cancer on a person, but then you're going to ask us to pray to that same God to take the cancer away, then, then you think God is schizophrenic. You think that God has multiple wills. That like you have no understanding of God. Why would God, I wouldn't even want to serve a God that's going to put cancer on me and then just so I could turn around and ask him to take it away and then he takes it away and then I worship him. That That's crazy. That, that means you don't know God. Like you don't understand how God works. God is not the one that's doing that. We live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen state. The, the truth is this world is on autopilot and that autopilot is set to darkness. This world is set to darkness. That's why Jesus said, Look, I'm in the world, not of the world. In John 17, when he prayed for us, he said, Father, I'm not going to ask you to take them out of the world. I'm going to leave, you, leave them in the world, but they're in the world, not of this world. We're supposed to be different. God didn't pull you out of the world because he wants you to change the world. So we are called to discern the will of God and then to choose to walk that thing out. We're supposed to walk and live by faith. And it has to be a choice. Overcoming darkness is a choice. Living holy is a choice. This doesn't mean that Bad things are not going to happen to good people. Bad things happen to good people. Like, and there's a lot of reasons we don't know. There's some things that we're not going to understand until we get to heaven. But let me say this. If you don't pursue God's purpose, um, the systems of this world is going to overtake you. Why? Because the, the systems of this world are set to overtake you. So as a believer, you got to understand that while God is sovereign, he knows all things. That doesn't mean that he's doing all things. He wants you to, to discern his will and then pursue that thing by faith. Number four, I'm going to try to wrap all this up in number four. I'm going to try to bring what I've been teaching in the series about the law and grace and all of that and what I'm teaching right now, bring it all together in this fourth point. Hopefully the, the light will come on for you. Let me just give you some quick points that will tie it together. It is true that God made plans for you before the world began. Put that in the chat. Put it in the chat. I'm not a mistake. Right? It is true. It is true that God has given you the grace already to become the man or the woman that God has called you to be. Whatever God has called you to be, the grace of God is on you to do it. That's true. You have plans. God, you were birthed into this into this world with a destiny. You're not a mistake. God made plans for you. God, God already gave you the grace to do it. All of that is true. It is also true that you live in a fallen world. So let me explain. Because you live in a fallen world, you don't have to do anything to go backwards. All you have to do to go backwards, all you have to do to regress is to stop progressing. Remember, I told you this is a year of progress, a year of progression for us, intentional progress. Well, all you have to do to regress is stop progressing. There, there's no such thing as no movement. You're always moving in one or two directions. So if you're not moving towards your divine purpose, you're moving away from it. If you're not moving towards your divine destiny, you're moving away from it. So the world is set to pull you back. The world is programmed to pull you away from God's will. So if you are going to, look at me, 
If you are going to become the man or the woman that God called you to be, if you are going to walk out your divine assignment, you're going to have to do it on purpose. You're going to have to be intentional. You're going to have to get up every morning and say, I'm walking and living by faith. I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to, I'm going to submit to the will of God. I'm going to make decisions that are based on the word of God. I'm going to do this thing. God has given you the grace. You have to provide the faith. If you succumb to the pressures of this world, if you allow yourself to be led astray, it won't be because God doesn't love you. It won't be because God didn't make plans for you from the foundations of the world. It won't be because God didn't already bestow the grace on you to become who it is that God has called you to be. It won't be because of none of that. It would just be because you failed to walk and live by faith. That's it. It's your faith that lays hold of God's grace. It's your faith that taps into God's power. It's your faith that keeps your feet bound to the path that God established for you from the foundations of the world. God has provided the grace, but you, look at me, you have to provide the faith. If you don't provide the faith, then you run the risk of missing out on God's best. You run the risk of getting to heaven only to realize that you wasted the one life that God gave you. Now, this doesn't mean that God is not sovereign. God is sovereign. It just means that our sovereign God will allow whatever you allow. Our sovereign God will permit whatever you permit. Put this in the chat. God will allow whatever I allow. God will permit whatever I permit. So listen, God has given you the grace to do everything he's called you to do. But that doesn't mean you're going to do it. You have to choose to do it. God has given you the grace, but now you have to provide the faith. Faith is a choice. So if you're going to become the man or woman that God called you to be, it's going to come as a result of your decision to live by faith as an act of your free will that's going to tap into the grace of God so that you can become the man or the woman that God has called you to be. My prayer for you is that you choose to walk and live by faith. This is a message you might need to listen to again. Get the notes. Look at all the scriptures. I'm not making this up. Listen, as a believer, God is sovereign. That doesn't mean that everything is going to work out well for you. God made plans for you, but that doesn't mean all those plans are going to come to pass. If you, you, let me just say this as I close. Don't try, don't, please don't try to act like you haven't disobeyed God before. Please don't try to act like you haven't rejected God before. Well, if you, God made plans for you, but if you reject those plans, then you may never fulfill those plans. You got it? God has provided the grace. You have to provide the faith. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to speak something over your life. I mean, I, I, you got to get this down in your heart. I, hear my heart. I want you to, to do it. I want you to maximize your purpose and potential, but it has to be an act of your free will. Speak this. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your amazing grace and my requirement to walk and live by faith. You made plans for me before the world began. You gave me both the power and the authority to represent you in this world. I live in a fallen world, but I'm not fallen. I have been redeemed. I am born again. I am covered by the blood of your son. I'm filled with your spirit. And I'm called according to your purpose. The world will see Jesus in me. I choose to live out what you already planned. As, as I do it, though, I won't be the one doing it. It will be you, Father, living in me. I'm a human conduit of the divine. I'm in this world, but not of this world. I am light and salt. I am a world changer. I am an atmosphere setter. I am all you have called me to be by your grace and for your glory. Greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. So please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, please go to todaysword.org. And you want my notes. I'm telling you, this was some good teaching right here. Um, you want these notes. So go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. If this message was a blessing to you, go into the chat right now. Leave me some comments. I like to read those comments and then share this message right now on your social media, on your timeline and with your friends. I love you. God loves you more. Have an amazing day. I'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless you. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to learn more about our ministry or you would like to partner with our ministry, please visit ripministries.org. You will learn there what we're doing in the Caribbean, providing a Christ-based education to Haitian children in the Dominican Republic. We also provide them 
a hot meal every day. If you would like to partner with us, click on the donate button. All the donations are tax deductible in the United States. If you don't have my book, Level Up Your Life, go to rickpina.co and get the book today. From rickpina.co, you'll also see that I have journals and I also have some other products and apparel and etc. all centered around the grace life. And then lastly, if you enjoy this content, but you want direct access to Isabella and I, the Lord impressed it upon my heart for Isabella and I to start mentoring people, giving people access to us to be able to ask us questions. We're answering questions about ministry, about missions, nonprofit, for-profit. I'm addressing things uh, as far as how I preach, our approach to preaching. We're putting out private content just for a specific group in the Patreon. So please visit patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina if you're interested in this material. Have an amazing day.